Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Go Cargo from Go Power Bikes. And before we jump into the review, if you are a returning viewer, I just wanna say thank you so much for checking out what we do. And if you are new to the channel, I would just ask that you would like and subscribe. It really helps this channel grow. It gives us more review opportunities so we can keep these bikes coming. And without further ado, let's get to the review. First, let's talk about the looks. The Go Cargo looks like a workhorse. It has got this huge rack in the back. It's very extended frame. These nice wood running boards on the side. And so this is a bike that looks to do some serious hauling. Now from the looks, it looks like it would be something that doesn't handle very well. It's probably big, it's probably awkward. One of the first things that I noticed when we rode it was how nimble it was. It didn't feel like I had this long wheel base. It didn't feel like I had this, you know, huge rack in the back. It felt like a regular bike. And honestly, with some of this geometry, it just felt more nimble than a lot of the e-bikes we tested. I don't know if I was expecting it not to be, and so maybe it was just kind of on par, but blew away my expectations as far as the nimbleness. So it looks like it wouldn't be very maneuverable, but it handles itself real well. We've got this black frame here. Go Power Bikes, all of their frames are black, so you don't have to worry about what color fenders you want. Looking at you, electric bike company. There's just too many options there, guys. So with Go Power Bikes, to keep it simple, it's all black, black, green, white. Those are the colors you get. I really like the wood accents here on their rear rack and the running boards just adds a nice little pizzazz to the bike. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a 750 watt rear hub motor. Now, as far as performance goes, this bike gets up to the top speeds. Now, the way it was designed, the use case here, you're gonna be towing things. And so this wasn't something where they engineered it to be hot off the line. There's not a whole lot of torque in that sort of, you know, right off the line area. You really do have to get up to those top speeds. And so the speed curve here is very gradual. So personally, that's something that if it was a bike I was gonna be riding around just to, you know, ride around and have fun, that's something I would say is a negative. However, with this bike and how you're gonna be using it, it's probably better that you have that slow ramp up in the power there. Now, when we're taking it on, you know, some slight inclines, things like that, the motor held up well, just kept, you know, chugging along at the top speed. So I never really ran into any issues where the motor was struggling anywhere. And as far as motor noise goes, it was very on par with all of the motors that, you know, we, we get. Now these tires they have on here, they don't have those big knobs. And so a lot of times with these fat tires, we've got these big knobs, creates a lot of road noise and such. And so these ones, they are running, you know, pretty select, very fast rolling tire. So they were a little bit quieter. So maybe the motor seemed a little bit louder, but only because I think it wasn't drowned out by the big knobs that we normally get. Now the bike comes configured as a class two, meaning its top speed is supposed to be 20 miles per hour. Now it seemed pretty consistently, we were getting it to 22. So that's what I have in the, you know, the top speed there in the class two mode, but that is something that I believe you can get in there and mess around with the advanced settings, get it to go a little bit faster. You've got this 48 volt battery, 750 watt motor, that combination should be able to get you to a higher top speed. It's something that's very configurable most of the time. Next, let's talk about the battery. The battery we have here is a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery. That's gonna get you 480 watt hours or about 18 to 36 miles of range. Now for a lot of the testing that I was doing prior to filming the ride test, I did a lot of that throttle only, top speed, you guys know how I do. And the battery was still holding up really, really well. So honestly, I feel like 18 miles is probably a reasonable estimation on the low end. And then if you're pedaling it and you don't have any extra you know, weight in the back, getting closer to 30, I think probably makes sense. The battery here is lockable and removable, which is nice. You can pop it off, charge it inside, leave the bike outside. This is not, uh, <laughs> this isn't a bike you're gonna you know, fold up and shove under a desk somewhere. This is a bike that lives and breathes outside of your house because it's just, it's a bigger bike. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes we have here are mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter discs on the front and the rear. Now, with a bike that is going these sort of speeds, it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit heavier. We also expect that we're gonna be carrying cargo in the back. I would like to see this upgraded to hydraulic brakes just because that's just an extra layer of safety we have here. And if I'm you know, running around all day, hitting on the brakes, I'm not gonna have to keep adjusting that as the cable stretch, you know, over time. However, in the testing that we did, they held up well, they stopped the bike exactly how you'd expect them to stop. So I don't really have any complaints about them. Just looking at it saying like, you know what, with this bike, with this use case, hydraulic brakes would probably be a good upgrade to make. Now, even though they are mechanical, they do also have 
motor cutoff inhibitor, so if you are going and you go to put on the brakes, it is gonna cut off the power to the motor, meaning that you're not fighting any extra power from the motor to brake the vehicle. As soon as you tap on those, it's gonna cut the power to the motor. Next, let's talk about the gears. The Gokaro comes with a 7-speed Shimano SIS index shifter up here on the right-hand side. As you guys know, I am a big fan of the SIS index shifters. Super easy, super intuitive, so it was a welcome sight to see it up here on uh, the handlebars in the Go Cargo. And that shifter is connected back here to this Shimano Altus derailleur. Now, Shimano name brand is great to see on any of these bikes. It's much better than, you know, an unbranded. We don't know where it came from. So the fact that it's Shimano, it is, you know, the lower end of Shimano, but the fact that we have that, that name brand there is awesome. Next, let's talk about the extras. Now, this bike is chock full of extras, so this may end up being the longest part of the review. So we have got the fenders both on the front and the rear, which is excellent. You imagine you're going to be riding this thing around city, urban, puddles, stuff like that. So keeping all that stuff off of you, off of the stuff you're carrying is excellent. We've also got a integrated front light up here in the front. And in order to use that, all you have to do is press and hold that top button on the control pad. That's going to turn the light on for you. We've also got an integrated tail light with brake integration. So that's excellent with a lot of these bikes kind of around this price point as well, you'll see brake lights where you got to go back and pop in some different batteries or turn it on and it can be sort of a hassle. So the fact that it's way back there, but it's also integrated and it's got braking integration, which means that as we're pulling down these levers, the light's going to flash, letting people know you're coming to a stop if they're behind you. Now, one thing we normally don't mention when we're talking about extras on a bike are the kickstands. However, with this bike, they've got this big double center kickstand and I found it to be perfectly suited for this bike. You can you know, set the bike down anywhere you want, even if it's unflat because it sort of has this kickstand kind of out to the side, it kind of acts as a regular kickstand. So it can go, you know, a ton of different degrees. I mean, I didn't go out and test, you know, it's like, oh, at you know 30 degrees, the bike tips over but there was a lot of latitude there as far as, you know, you put it on a level surface, it's awesome. You can put it on a level surface, you could sit on the back rack. Uh, so that was, that was super cool. So like I said, normally we don't mention it, but the kickstand here was really cool and well executed. Now the final extra, and you guys have probably been waiting for me to talk about it, is the rear rack. So the rear rack itself is integrated into the frame, so you don't have to worry about going and tightening up any little small bolts here or there or the other. So that's excellent. That's gonna give us a lot of longevity. It's gonna give us a lot of strength, meaning we can carry more things here in the back. And on top of the rear rack, we've got this light wood, which matches the running boards here on the bottom, which I found to be super fun. Even when you're riding it, you can sit in the back, uh, put your feet on on those, you know, kind of leaning forward, a little cafe racer style. And I was thralling around in the back and that was kind of a, a fun experience. I don't, I'm sure it's not, you know, recommended, but uh, you can do it. I mean, I did it. So there's just tons of room back here. So you can get crazy with the amount of stuff I believe you could, you know, throw back here. If you want to, you know, stack some pizzas on there, you need to put a couple of boxes. Yeah, you can get pretty creative back here. You also have got a mounting point up here on the head tube in case you would like to mount a front basket or a front rack or any of those accessories. Next, let's talk about the suspension. There is no traditional suspension on the Go Cargo. We don't have a front fork. We don't have any sort of rear suspension. But the things we do talk about when we talk about suspension are going to be the tires. So the tires we have here are these 24 by 3 Kenda tires. Now, these tires, like I'd mentioned earlier in the motor section, they run fast. They run quiet. They have really good grip. I never lost any traction when I was going around on the cement or anything like that. So this was a cool tire to see. I don't know if I've seen this particular tire before. So it was interesting. I liked it. Big fan. You know, it has its use case and that's, you know, staying on the concrete where it can have the most grip. It's getting the most surface area on your riding surface. But if your plan is to stay in these sort of environments, these tires were awesome. Now we don't have any sidewall reflective stripes or anything like that, which would be a nice addition to have on the bike. The other part of suspension we talk about is the butt suspension. So the saddle we have here is this Just Tech wide comfort saddle. It wasn't one of those saddles that's obnoxiously wide, but it's wider than say like a normal sort of like mid-sized saddle. I liked it, fit me well where the saddle was positioned. I thought was great for pedaling, very comfortable. I could see myself being able to ride around on this all day long without any issues. Now with the saddle, 
as you guys know if you've watched any of our reviews before, it really is about matching up your sit bones to the particular saddle and where that's gonna support your sit bones. And so for me, it was great. You know, for you, it might not be great, but the nice thing is, is that a saddle is something that is, you know, a $20 to $50 replacement to find something that's, you know, half decent that would support you a little bit better if this one isn't right for you. Next, let's talk about the controls. The controls here are super simple. We've seen them a million times. We have got an on-off switch here in the middle. We have got an up and down arrow to raise or lower our level of pedal assist. And once we've got the screen on, the readouts we're gonna get are gonna be our current speed, battery level, odometer, trip distance, if our lights are on or not. It's gonna show us our level of pedal assist between zero to five, unless we go in there and change it to something different. It's also gonna show us the watts that we're pulling. Now, most of the screens that we get like this they either show watts or errors, and I've found that you know usually it's showing if there's like errors or something down there at the bottom. But the fact that we've got a watts readout here is excellent. It's gonna help us keep track of the efficiency of the motor and see how much juice it's pulling at any particular time, letting us, you know, giving us some more feedback there as far as the performance. And over here on the right-hand side, we've got the twist throttle for throttling and twisting. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. According to the Go Power Bikes website, this is supposed to fit riders anywhere between five foot four and six foot two. Now, I would agree with the six foot two, maybe even push that to six foot four because we've got this adjustable stem up here in the front. The five four is a little iffy. You do have this bigger bike. Again, you're gonna probably be having weight back here. So if it were me, I'd probably up that to about five six or so, maybe five seven if you're gonna be carrying a lot of weight back there, just because as we stack that weight up, the bike's gonna be a little bit longer, a little bit harder to control. Now the step over height here isn't too bad. The step over height is 24 inches. That's pretty accessible for most people. But the angle of the top tube here is fairly aggressive, and that just means that you're not going to have that 24 inches to fit a lot of yourself in there. So it's 24 inches here at the lowest spot, but as you go up to, you know, there's six inches and eight inches, it's going to get higher than that. So that is the lowest point, but if you were going to comfortably get on and off it, you'd probably want to be able to clear a little bit more than that 24 inches. Now, as far as the reach goes, an 18 inch reach, which is reasonable anybody should be able to get that and again we have got the adjustable stem we can raise those handlebars up we can pull the handles back a little bit if we want to so 18 inches is where i had it set up which i thought was a pretty good middle point but you could make it more you could make it less depending on what you need to get out of it and while we're talking about the measurements let's go ahead and run through some of those so we've got a 16 inch c tube here we have got a 28 inch minimum saddle height and a 36 inch maximum saddle height. So plenty of range there for fitting those different sizes. We've got a 26.5 inch width here at the handlebars, a 53 inch wheelbase and a 78 inch length overall. That's right folks, 78 inches, which is quite bigger than, I mean, it's an extra six to seven to eight inches longer than most of the bikes that we test that are fairly big bikes. So just so you know, like this is a cargo bike, it's longer. For fitting you know more cargo as far as use cases go for the go cargo it's in the name it's for cargo whether that's food delivery service hauling around some other sort of stuff you know small human beings whatever it might be that's what this bike is designed for and a lot of the things that they made here as far as the decisions go make sense with that being the use case i think it would be a decent family bike kind of veering off into that use case a little bit if you had room to throw on i mean because with this thing you could throw on the child seat in the back and then a pannier bag behind that so you could have you know the picnic stuff you could have some toys you could have some snacks whatever you want to do plus the kids car seat there and you're riding around on the bike you know having this double kickstand in the middle is nice because you know you could pop it out if you need to get something from the back and i don't have to worry about keeping hold of the bike you know it's tipping over falling over trusting you know that small little kickstand that comes on most bikes so that probably would be a pretty decent use case here although i think they are really leaning more towards food delivery you know service stuff like that so i could see it being used either way however the caveats to both of those would be this is going to perform a lot better without too many hills you know it'll tackle some hills but it's going to wear out the battery a little bit a little bit more so as long as you're on the concrete I think you're good to go. All right, guys, we talked about the motor. We talked about the battery. We talked about how this thing feels to ride. So we're going to head out and do a little bit of a ride test here. If you guys want to see that full ride test video, I'll have a link to that here. Otherwise, you can see the abridged version here at the end. All right, let's make that toast. So we're out here on the Go Cargo. We're going to be doing a little ride test on it. 
In case you're wondering why the video quality looks so much better than the last one, it's because our GoPro 8 died, and so now we get the brand new GoPro 10. So this is that GoPro 10 quality. But back to the bike. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Just hold down this middle button here. So let's go ahead and start out with the throttle. Now, you'll notice we're in pedal assist level zero. However, the throttle still works even when it's in pedal assist level zero. So normally I comment and say that that's kind of a safety feature when you put the pedal assist on, or when you put it on zero, you know, the throttle doesn't work. So with this one, you still have access to the throttle even though the pedal assist is off, not really a huge deal. And that might be something we can go and change in the advanced settings somewhere. We're just cruising around hitting that 21, 22 miles per hour. So, throttle works, you're just cruising around, super nice and you know easy. Let's go ahead and put on the brakes here. Now the braking right out of the box was excellent. We do have these mechanical disc brakes instead of having hydraulics. Now since this is a cargo bike and you should be having a little bit more weight on here, it would probably make sense in my opinion to upgrade to hydraulic brakes, but the mechanical ones they have, they do just fine. So let's go ahead and Test this out, it will do pedal assist level one. And just do some, some pedaling. Now you get about half a rotation, three quarters, sometimes one rotation before the pedal assist kicks in. Now, normally I would comment on this like, oh, you know, it feels a little slow. However, going back to what this bike is designed for, you're gonna be carrying things in the back, whether that's you know people, small people, or food, things like that. So not having all that get up and go and torque makes a lot of sense that they designed that bike this way. So, sort of something to look at. If you're looking for something that's, you know, torquey and you wanna really do some, do some speed and stuff like that, that's not really what this bike is for and there's plenty of other options out there for you. So we'll go ahead and put it in pedal assist level two. Uh, that's gonna take us to about the uh, 11 mile mark. We'll do pedal assist level three. Gets us to that 14, 15 or so. Down this little hill, picking up some spin. Oh goodness, I have like five gnats in my eye. Oh my goodness, that was like a wall of bugs. Huh. Okay, I think they're all out. Well, there's bugs out here, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys were uh, curious about that, there's yeah, there's some bugs. Let's go ahead and do pedal assist level four. It takes us about the 18 miles per hour, and pedal assist level five. Wait till we pop on the other side over here and then we will uh, do some more some more running. All right, pedals is level five. Let's go ahead and pull some watts here. We're at 850, 700, about, it's kind of jumping around 450 ish, 300. Nice easy pace, hitting that 20, 21 miles per hour. Now this particular bike comes in a class two configuration. However, I do believe that you could configure it to, uh, to class three. I'd have to, again, similar to the, the throttle situation, I'd have to jump into the advanced settings and see if we can mess around with that. But this is a fairly common display. And so normally you'll just hold the up and down arrows. You get into the positions menu and that's where you can really do some damage. And fairly long, not something you're gonna be sticking in the back of an SUV. You could probably get away with the truck. If you had a bigger truck, you kind of angle a little bit in there. But for the most part, this thing just uh, cruises. Now we do get a little bit of, you see a little bit of that wobble action there, and that's just because most of the weight is in the back. So if you lean forward, you're gonna get a little bit less of that. But when you're in the back, there's just not quite as much weight on the handlebars. But you can ride it no-handed if you had to. So that is nice. Let's go ahead, really hammer on these brakes, see what happens. And three, two. One. Got a nice little, nice little skid. Is that me? I smell some rubber. I don't know if that's these tires or not. Maybe somebody's burning garbage in their backyard. I don't know. So that's probably about uh, 12, 15 feet, and that is not a very efficient way to stop. We're just, you know, we're doing a review, so we're going to smash on some things and kind of see what happens. One thing I was surprised about when I was riding this bike was the nimbleness of it. Because you look at it, it's longer, it's got this big, you know, rack in the back where, where back racks, you know, you know, that's where they go. And this thing really does have some agility to it. 
I mean, that feels super comfortable just kicking in, keeping that weight over the bottom bracket. You're really able to, uh, yeah, it feels a lot more nimble than it looks. That was one of my first impressions was, uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some stuff on this bike. And that is gonna do it for our full review of the Go Cargo from Go Power Bikes. If you guys wanna know more about them, I'll have a link to their website down below. If you guys have any questions about this or there wasn't something we covered here in the specs, which are also down below, please let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one.